welcome back everybody and particularly all my new subscribers who inexplicably I've been gaining quite a lot of recently despite not having put out a video for some time uh, it's all the usual excuses um, it's cold in the workshop um, general winter slump and uh, more medical problems in that I'm suffering from a frozen right shoulder more technically known as adhesive capsulitis um, which can be exceedingly painful and actually physically limits the uh, the movement of the joint so when I have been doing stuff I certainly haven't got a spare hand for a camera um, so even stuff I have managed to get done hasn't been filmed um, but all sorts of little jobs have got done. Um, I'm obviously in my uh, my office electronics workspace up in the loft, and uh, things have changed around a lot in in here uh, to create more electronics workbench space. And uh, we'll have a look at what's on the bench in a minute. On the 4K monitor behind me, you can see a schematic diagram. Um, and this is for an open source uh, motor inverter control board and it's well worth uh, popping over to openinverter.org and seeing the work that's going on there to uh, reuse um, commercial electric vehicle components um, in aftermarket um, conversions or adaptions or even things that are outside electric vehicles, um, people building very large um, off-grid inverters out of some of these components. Um, and the work that uh, Johannes Hübner in Germany and Damien Maguire in Ireland in particular uh, are doing is absolutely uh, fantastic and it's all open source, uh, although both of them sell um, circuit boards if you don't want to go to all the trouble of uh, uh, of ordering your own, which you are quite free to do using the information provided. So this design um, uses an STM32 uh, microcontroller, uh, which is part of the ARM series and has some very useful onboard um, hardware for generating the required um, three-phase sine wave PWM signals and in particular what I got interested in was the generation 2 Toyota Prius inverters. Um, the Prius of course is an extremely popular minicab and there are a lot of them reaching end of life and getting scrapped uh, and if you find the right breaker yards who realize you can't sell these inverters as repair parts because they're Toyotas and they never go wrong and actually are just prepared to sell them off at um, not a, much over scrap value um, then they're a great source I mean, you know you can easily pick one up for less than 200 pounds my aim is to pick them up for considerably less than 100 pounds uh, probably um, not for more than half that so um, there are two inverters, um, a smaller one and a larger one, plus a boost circuit uh, for raising the uh, the 200 volt battery up to as much as 550 for um, uh, operating the, the motors in the Prius at maximum speed. And there's a DC to DC converter to give you 100 amps of 12 volt um, in lieu of an alternator. And there's even another small inverter that would drive the air conditioning compressor. So I've been playing with this stuff for a little while, um, on and off, just the odd hour here and there. Hit some snags, which I'll talk about when we go and look at um, the test setup on the bench. Sorry about the. Uh... The rather harsh lighting in here. That's the uh, 
cold white LED strip light which actually provides me with quite a nice working light but can be a bit glary on camera so I've been investing in a little bit of um, a kit to help out so I've got a hot air reflow station um, a desoldering gun which is really nice uh, the Rigol scope I invested in some while back and here we have my experimental inverter setup. So on the top here we have a large capacitor bank. Underneath is uh, the intelligent power module, which does nearly all. Of, it does all of the the high power stuff, all the gate drives, um, dead time, desaturation detect, all of that lovely stuff, all built into a high reliable module. And I'll just show you over here, there's another one. If I take that capacitor off the top, there's the power module. You've got a pair of DC terminals on the bottom left here. Three terminals down the left. Uh, the smaller inverter um, for MG1. And the three terminals on the right are for the larger main traction motor in the Prius. And the little white units, you'd see two of them there, and two on the other side, are the current sensing um, devices. So I got this inverter hooked up via a Nissan Leaf main contactor and pre-charge box to some Leaf cells, and there's um, well, it's sitting at about 54 volts there. There's seven modules, which is 14 cells. And then over here we have the breadboard uh, with the STM32 F103 um, processor and a little uh, Wemos D1 Mini, which is a uh, acting as a Wi-Fi interface. It's got a little web server on it and you can upload new firmware um, and access all the parameters via that. And then we've just got a little bit of traditional breadboarding going on. Um, the three transistors that interface to the gate drive signals. A um, pair of level shifters for the current sensors. Um, the current output is bipolar, so naught current is naught volts and then positive currents result in positive voltages and negative currents result in negative and they have to be translated into a naught to 3.3 which is the nominal supply voltage of the STM32 um, with zero current at half supply rail so that's just checking those out and a uh, little board on the end is uh, just a power supply module that's designed to plug into these breadboards. Now I got interested in um, what was going on on the Open Inverter forum partly because of the, what was being done with this little board on the right which is also an STM32 F103 but you can see it's a physically smaller chip than this one so it's a lower pin count um, but they squeeze the code sorry they squeeze the functionality onto the pins that were available uh, and this little guy is known as the blue pill and you can get them for delivered for a couple of pounds and being in this 0.6 inch um, row spacing board that would plug into a breadboard was very nice and little tip these breadboards are set up for a 0.3 inch wide chip package and by the time you've got a 0.6 on board You've got precious few slots uh, available either side, 
So this is an old trick of mine is to buy, take a couple of um, breadboards, remove the the power rail from the side and to stick them down to a board with the correct spacing for a 0.6 package. However the blue pill appears to have a little problem that one of the critical pins uh, picks up a signal from the pulse width modulation um, circuit which is right next to it and shuts it down every time you want to start it up. So I had in fact more or less at the same time as I ordered the blue pills ordered these boards which is the uh, the larger chip and they weren't much more expensive they are about £2.50 delivered from China just took a little while uh, less than two weeks to come through and having got that loaded up with the code that's all running like it's supposed to um, it's just a rather messier installation some of these leads could be shorter but yet I'd still have something of a hairball compared to just being able to plug the board in but we should be um, all set up uh, to be able to spin the motor we've got a couple of bench supplies up the top here and the one on the left is powering the contactor box. So if I enable the output you'll hear a contactor cut in and then I have a switch which brings in the second contactor the capacitor bank having been pre-charged via a resistor and the second bench supply provides power to the intelligent power module plus the enable line for the MG2 inverter and the STM32 board is all powered up. Uh, the little blue um, diagnostic LED by the way is on the wrong pin uh, for the code version but that's all right I do know that it is in fact alive. So we should now. Oh, and I have a uh, a four horsepower motor sitting on the floor. So if I go over to the computer and the Wi-Fi interface, we should should be able to get this um, spinning. So this is the uh, the web interface. And. Lots of parameters, and then this is live data from the inverter. So what we shall do is I shall send some custom commands. which are described on this page on the openinverter.org wiki under schematics and instructions so this is just going to spin the motor at 10 Hertz I'll just copy and paste these over and I'll come back when I'm about to send the last one So we've got the basic test parameters set into the inverter. So if now I click on start inverter in manual mode, we have motor spin. And we can do a stop. Start. Bearing in mind this is all being done over the Wi-Fi control interface. And a stop. So we have all the basic functionality all working. Um, 
I can now start checking out the current level um, converter circuitry and uh, proceed from here.